Hello everyone and welcome. Today we will talk about the pathophysiology of tuberculosis, or TB. So TB is a potentially serious bacterial infection spread through respiratory droplets. It is caused by four main mycobacterium species, uh, these being mycobacterium tuberculosis, mycobacterium bovis, mycobacterium africanum, and mycobacterium microti. These four together form the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. Now, the main causative agent of TB in humans is mycobacterium tuberculosis, and actually these other three are said to cause TB-like infections. So tuberculosis is a multi-system disease, meaning it will affect many organ systems in the body. However, it most commonly affects the respiratory system, termed pulmonary TB. Uh, here we can see an um, image of a lung infected with tuberculosis, and you can see that in a TB infection, it, it will most often uh, infect the upper lobes of the lungs. And we will talk about why that is in just a bit. Now, some of the other systems affected include the GI tract, the genital urinary system, the CNS, causing tuberculosis meningitis, and the skeletal system, causing septic arthritis and osteomyelitis. Now, in terms of the epidemiology of tuberculosis, um, it is estimated that one-third of the world's total population are infected with TB. Um, worldwide, TB is one of the top 10 causes of death, causing around 1.4 million deaths in 2010. And uh, there has been a concerted global effort to eradicate TB uh, since it was declared a world emergency in 1993. Um, now, while this has been showing some positive results, like a 22% drop in TB mortality from uh, year 2000 to 2015, TB is still a major burden in uh, worldwide health. Here in the map, we can see the countries where TB is ma mainly concentrated. Um, and there we have China and India as the main uh, areas of infection. So what is this bacteria and how does it affect the body? So mycobacterium tuberculosis is a facultative intracellular pathogen, meaning they reproduce and survive inside the host cells. And they are obligate aerobes, meaning they need oxygen to survive. And that's why they will concentrate in the upper lobes of the lungs, because those are the areas with high oxygen content. These bacteria are very slow growing and have an unusual cell wall, which is rich in lipids, mainly mycolic acid. Due to their high lipid content, they are now well stained with gram stain, and so the zeonucin stain is used, and they are described as acid fast bacilli, staining bright red. So, first, let's talk about primary tuberculosis. That describes the first infection with TB. So once you inhale mycobacterium tuberculosis, they are taken up by alveolar macrophages. So here we have a, uh, some alveolar sacs, and if we zoom in here, we see there the alveolar macrophage. Now, unlike most bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis is able to survive inside the macrophage, and it will start replicating inside it. And this will cause the release of neutrophil chemoattractants and cytokines, resulting in the recruitment of inflammatory cells. So you have an infiltration of fluid into the lungs, this fluid containing white blood cells. Now, there will be a development of a cellular immune response. Because if we go back to immunology, um, mycobacterium tuberculosis is an intracellular organism, an intracellular uh, bacteria. And so presence of um, antibodies is not going to be much effective. So we will have the recruitment of different cells, uh, T cells, macrophages, um, and develop a cellular immune response. So TB is a classic example of a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. And the recruitment and activation of tissue macrophages is mainly uh, influenced by interferon gamma. Now these macrophages that are going to be recruited are going to surround the site of infection creating a granuloma. Now what is a granuloma? As we have the um, recruitment of different macrophages there will be two main changes occurring to these cells, to these macrophages. 
One is the formation of multinucleated giant cells, also called Langhans giant cells, which will be formed by the fusion of uh, multiple macrophages. And we will have ep epithelioid cells, which are modified macrophages that undergo a change in shape and have the ability to produce cytokines. So the macrophages are going to become Langhan cells, Langhan cells, and epithelioid cells. And so a granulomatous lesion presents a central area of cases necrosis, surrounded by epithelioid and Langhan cells, as well as lymphocytes. And there will be a degree of fibrosis and calcification. So this here is some lung tissue, and we see this well circumscribed area here. We're going to have a central area of cases necrosis, uh, or um, it is termed cases necrosis as it looks like cheese or a, a cheese-like uh, appearance. And surrounding it we have epithelioid cells and Langhans giant cells. So here we can see this for example here is a Langhans giant cell. It has multi nuclei and kind of looks like a horse shoe. And uh, also we have uh, lymphocytes around it. And now this is going to be termed a GON focus. This focus of infection uh, where we have a bunch of um, cells surrounding um, um, the initial area of infection is termed a GON focus. Now subsequently the caseated areas heal completely and many become calcified. And if we are able to fight off the infection, so if all the TB bacteria die, then that's the end of it, and we're fine. However, in, in most cases, um, some of these calcifications or calcified nodules will still contain bacteria. So this will be bacteria that is contained by the immune system, um, and they are capable of lying dormant for years. Now this is termed latent TB. So this is when the immune system contains the infection, but it has the potential of reactivating. So if we look here at this lung, for example, a gone focus there containing the bacterial infection, and we're fine like this. We have no symptoms, don't feel sick. However, it may reactivate if anything happens to our immune system. And as I mentioned before, that approximately a third of the world is infected with TB. It doesn't mean that a third of the world is experiencing active TB disease. Uh, in fact, the majority of people have it in a latent uh, phase where it doesn't really affect us. Now, the trouble is when it reactivates. Uh, so reactivation TB. And this is the majority of cases of active disease. So... If the immune system becomes compromised, such as in aging or in AIDS, uh, TB has a very high correlation with AIDS. As, uh, as we saw before, it is a cell-mediated immune response. And in AIDS, we have very little white blood cells, CD4 white blood cells. Then um, TB can reactivate. And now, it will usually spread to the upper lobes and can be present in both lungs. Now, since we've kind of dealt with it before, we're going to have some memory immunity to it. And um, we, we're going to have T cells releasing cytokines, a lot of cytokines. And this will be to try and contain that infection again. However, this time it will lead to more cases necrosis, more formation of granulomas. However, now it has the tendency to cavitate, so form cavities. As we can see here in this image, a very big cavity there in the upper lobe. And we can see it looks a bit different from everywhere else in the lung. Now these cavities will allow bacteria to spread more easily and if it spreads through the vascular system uh, it will then has, have the potential to infect pretty much anywhere in the body and this is termed miliary TB. So how will a patient with TB present? So if it is tuberculosis infecting the lungs, the pulmonary TB, Patients will present a productive cough with occasional hemoptysis. Uh, there will be some systemic symptoms such as weight loss, fever, and night sweats. And a hoarse voice and severe cough if there is laryngeal involvement. Now, if it is TB affecting the lymph nodes, 
which is the uh, second most common site of TB infection, uh, we will see some swollen lymph nodes. Now, extrathoracic nodes are more commonly affected, and they usually present as a firm, non-tender enlargement of a cervical or supraclavicular lymph node. So here, if uh, we have a look at a uh, lymph node, we will see kind of that same presentation as in lung tissue. So we're going to have cases necrosis and the formation of granulomas. Here we can see another Langhen uh, giant cell with that horseshoe shape and some epithelioid macrophages. Um, so yeah, lymph nodes affected also present with central necrosis and there's a formation of a cold abscess. Now TB can affect uh, bone and uh, it tends to affect the spine. Um, it can lead to something called POTS disease. So as you can see here in these images, uh, there is damage to the vertebral body, leading to vertebral collapse, and an acute angulation of the spine called gibbous. Um, so yeah, we can see here uh, the corrections, uh, there are a lot of damage in the spine, and this can lead to that acute angulation of the spine. Now other forms of TB, uh, it can affect, as we mentioned before, central nervous system leading to meningitis, as we can see there. Uh, also, the genital urinary system tends to be in, uh, affected as well. And pericardio, so the heart, leading to pericarditis. And here we have an image, a little bit of a summary of the most common areas affected by tuberculosis. Now let's move on to some questions to make sure you've understood everything. Feel free to pause the video to think of your answer. So what is the main causative agent of TB in humans? Mycobacterium tuberculosis is Mycobacterium tuberculosis replicates uh, inside which cell? TB is an example of what is latent TB? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more.